right, fuckers and fuckettes. What we're doing now is a uh, oil change on a. Uh, this is O2, right? Yes. O2 GS500F. Now your drain is right there. I, he had to move the pan out of the way. By the way, that's Travis. He's the one doing this shit. If you can't see his face, well, <laughs> at least I tried. Um, and then your oil filter is right here. I'm going to try and keep up with him while he's doing this shit. This is his bike. He works on it. He turns all his own wrenches. I just kind of show him how and what to do. Um, you need some new rubbers in your valve cover bolts up here. I don't think it's your gasket, I think it's the rubbers under, that are supposed to be under them bolts. Oh, just under the bolts? Yeah, there's little rubbers that go under there. That's kind of, that's be easy to replace, I think. Yeah, I put on new bolts at the same time, but... Right. Why'd you grab that little ass wrench? <laughs> you couldn't find the swingy? No, I'm good though. By the way, wait until your motor cools off, because otherwise that oil is hot when it comes out of there. Learned that by trial and error. <laughs> he learned that by burning his fucking fingers just like the rest of us. <laughs> it's coming out pretty clean. Not too bad. Been about almost three months. You've only put on a thousand miles in three months? That would probably be about right. Alright, somebody call, somebody call the motorcycle gods, they're going to be pissed. That's sacrilegious right there. The uh, marvels in the right cupboard up there? You're gonna. What? The cupboard right by you, all the way to the far right door. Okay. I don't have any diesel right now or I'd offer. For what? Just to give it a flush out to get the rest of it out. Oh, okay. You already replaced this cover gasket here, right? The side cover gasket? Yeah, that one's been replaced. Need to tighten up your oil pan. But. Yeah, it looks like it stopped leaking finally. What am I going over here for again? Marvel. Wrong! The cupboard that you were by. Oh. Far left door. Even though I said right a minute ago. Red jug right there. Yeah. Move the engine from the inside out. You want to pour this down this side right here? Just dump uh, about a kid's milk curtain worth through there, just enough to any remaining sludge you get it out of there. I don't know. Uh, Suzuki, and you can use diesel, but since it's, I've been lazy and haven't gone and gotten no diesel, we're using Marvel this week. On break, right? <laughs> Always on break. See that way, if there's any extra sludge in there, you get it out. Hello, Bubba. How much are you? Fire? Yeah. Freaking 14 hours a day this week to suck. <laughs> Goes from no work to everything. So. Yeah. I've got the camera away from you, so if you bust yourself, that's you. <laughs> He got his bracket almost, his fork brace bracket almost made. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Cut all that, and then cut it through that straight line, and then cut it to the edge. Better than that. Oh, it's a little bit of a stock on the Yeah. 
tell the difference. Yeah. Now you see why I recommend everybody get an aftermarket fork brace or make one? Mm -hmm. well, that took me a long, that took me almost an hour to cut the edges. <laughs> More like 45 minutes probably. Felt like an hour though. Will they stand it up a little bit more? Should be good. It looks almost level. Yeah, there you go. Get as much of it out of there as you can. Mom give you your turn signals? No. I'm not worried about it. Am I on that wood? Yeah. Busy Whether I want to or not. Got a little bit of everything in here, don't you? Yeah, I got some spaghetti, <laughs> a bunch of rice, a little bit of borscht. <laughs> and sodas up there, you can help yourself if you want one. They're warm, but they're free. Everybody keeps bringing cases of sodas. And none of them bring a fucking ice. I need to get you a mini fridge. Yeah. I got one in that toolbox at the house. That big husky I bought from Home Depot. Uh huh. Got a fridge and stereo and everything in it. Damn. But it's too pretty to bring up here. Yeah. I'll wait until I fuck it up a couple of years first. <laughs> <laughs> then the fridge probably won't work. <laughs> We've already blown the speakers out of the stereo. Damn. Well, they're not blown, but they're rattly. That red wing out front is the one you want. Unless you got three grand laying around, that goose is nice. Well, I had to buy a freaking car. See, you could have that wing for 1500 Popping loose the. I already popped these two screws. There's three, three nuts actually. Got to pop off. I already got two of them off. I think on that one there's a little spring in there. That's why I always have to push my hand against the plate. And then the bolt comes loose real oh, yeah. easy with my fingers. trying not to get his vehicle in there either because I don't want to get him in no trouble. <laughs> okay, you need to take that over to the parts washer. You see the sand on the top? Oh yeah, nasty. I'm and not you... having a fender, huh? Yep. And out she pops. Nice, pretty good oil in there. Uh, it doesn't say if it's a CH6000. What's the same though? It is. Alright. Well, Suzuki only used two or three filters oh. in that era. If they drive and one me, of them was a spin on. If they drive me this month like they say they're going to, I might have the money. Alright, I just put, I only got a couple thousand, eight thousand miles on that back tire. It's a 50,000 mile tire. The um, coils, I'll hand you a set of coils. I will not put them on for you at that price. You're going to need one. Front, right. front two cylinders aren't. She'll um, she'll fire. She'll do really good over 2,000. Under 2,000, the one coil's cracked. It's testing bad. Oh, shit. How do you do this, though? So, uh, Travis, hand him a coil and show him how hard it is to hook one up. <laughs> Should be two or three laying right there, right here by this saw. Oh, the one right there in front of you, big black thing. This one? Yeah. See that? Two bolts, two wires, and two spark plug wires.
Don't mention who he works for or where. I'm trying not to get him in trouble. All right, I'll see you. I'll get with you. If not, I'll do. All right. But um, I've got uh, the silver one is out too. I'd like that go at the same price, but that one runs perfect. I've actually gone through that engine myself. The pretty up part, you're going to be painting for months. Oh, really? But the I, engine's solid, it's got a fresh clutch in it. Yeah, I, I painted for 20 years, so that doesn't bother me. I've got my old, the, uh, the dark red, the maroon one that I used to ride. I've got her out again. I'd let that one go at probably 3,000. Uh, and that I just put fresh speakers, fresh stereo, and fresh tires, everything on it. Okay. I'll get with you. All right. All right. Good Yo. Question. Oh, yeah. She really was 18. Huh? She really was 18. All right. We got that head all put back together. Choice, everything good, went over, Bob reassembled it all, wrapped the valve in, put it all together. No compression whatsoever on that cylinder. Loosened the fucking the valve train up a little bit. 140 pounds. Remember what I told you about before you pulled it apart to check? Remember I told you to stick a feeler gauge in there? Mm -hmm. I did that. Turn the engine by hand? Yeah, I did that. Barely slip a piece of paper or a piece of the finest one through there. Yeah. Okay. But what would what would be different now? All we did was unbolt the valve train, set it off. Didn't Your rockers disturb it. were still tight, and you didn't turn the engine over a couple of times when you put it back together before right, you went to checking it. Grab this. Well, after we put everything. Oh well, yeah, we turned it up to TDC when we uh, when we uh, uh, we brought that piston up to clean the top of the piston off. Either your rod wasn't either either your rod wasn't sit all the way down in the thing like it's supposed to. The push rods? Yeah. Yeah, they're down there. You can feel them all nice and neat and neat down in there. They might not have been all the way down. That would hold one open. Okay. Well, now I took it all apart again. Did the same thing again. Thought maybe I confused the two because one's a little shorter than the other. I marked them. The shorter ones to the front, longer ones to the back. Okay. Flipped them back. Pulled it back down. No compression again. Loosen it up just a little bit. Loosen the whole train up just a little bit. Compression out the ass. I'm about ready to put four fucking washers underneath. No, give me a few minutes as soon as we're done shooting this video. I'll come over and take a peek. Okay, because as I said, I'm just about ready to throw four washers underneath the damn valve train to lift it up that much. To No, 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 no. Use real shims. You know better than that. I don't have shims, and I'm, this fucking bike's gonna get gas poured all over it. It's torched in the yard. Sorry. <laughs> I know the feeling, though. Well, no, we're doing the oil change on a GS 500F because we haven't done one yet. Okay, no, what the I gasket comes out, this little rubber thing, and you get a new one with your oil filter. And replace that. This could be a pain. What are you up to today? Happy birthday, you old fart. Yeah, <laughs> you know I don't really get one this year. You got any old power supplies laying around for that would, might fit a Toshiba laptop? Manny. Huh? Manny. Down at the dome, he's got the universals. Oh, Manny, okay. In the what dome flea for? market. Yeah. Uh, Is he going to be down there? They're doing a gun show down there. Is he going to be down there this Are they? Weekend? I think. Cool. Third and fourth. I have no idea. I can give you his number, 661-5863. Oh, let me make sure. Now, the computer may be bad, so I may need to uh, try a, a power supply, and if it doesn't work, then it'll just condemn the computer. Oh. Manny? Yeah. 661-5583, but let me make sure. Wow. 
Now he's forgotten that trick that I showed him about. I know. I'm trying to put on there to hold it in for him. Is that That's what it what was? I, I've got those gaskets in the pool business sometimes. And I tell you what else I found them on Honda cars back in the early '80s. O-rings where there would be gaskets on any other car. Yep. And some of the O-rings were not formed to the shape. You had to get them to stick. Yeah. O-rings where you never saw an O-ring on an engine. <laughs> and Honda did it. All right, what was your little trick? I put grease on it. Either white lithium or axle grease. Is that what it was? I keep popping right there. You got some laying around? Well, in the same cupboard you got the marble out of, there should be some in there. And yeah, what's all the liquid you got all over your hand? Parts water. Oh, okay. That might slow the grease down from sticking it in there, too. Some guys use Vaseline to stick it in there. No, but I mean that parts washer might cause the reason grease. why it's slipping? Well, I don't know that, but I'm just saying when you Wouldn't use it Wouldn't make it slickerier. It does, yeah. When the, you use a grease, it sticks it just by, I don't know, some kind of friction, but it's not friction. They used to make them kind of dry. Well, suction. Yeah, yeah, hydraulic lock, that's right. Yeah. I used to use it all the time. Ah, I, I put a finger full of grease down in the groove first. Me. Just fact, thought I showed you that last I time. I had O-rings that were too long, and I would put them in there with the grease and get to the point where they were overlapping and cut them off and uh, shove the points for? together. Short round squat cam that I'm not seeing from here. Uh, yeah, check over in the next. Oh, I see where he's at. Big boy. I got rid of most of my big stuff. I got rid of all my small bore shit. That's what I'm going to, is small. Yeah. If I'm going to shoot somebody, I want to hold on that motherfucker a mile wide. 7165583. Hang on. See, it's a good thing I looked it up. <laughs> okay, hold on. 7165583. I got the 5583 five, right. Yeah, you, you're doing the same thing I do. Well, no, I gave you the beginning from his home number and the end from his cell number. That's what I, <laughs> I fucked up. Is it over here? I'm not seeing it. Hold on. Ah! All right. It's got okay. to be... Yeah, right there. What? Snake! Oh, that little thing? That'll work. And there's the other one. Snake! Looking right at me. I mean, the whole thing is grease. So how old are you? Well, it would be 53 if I had a birthday this year. You're not having one? No, he's not allowed. I don't get one this year. Get another birthday till 2016. I used to put the grease on dry. Yeah, especially that water-based one. That stuff. You can use that for burnouts on your tires. What? Don't use it at the drag strip, but the kids. They've been coming and robbing my old parts washer juice out of that water-based one. Oh, yeah, to do burnouts. Yeah, they get on this concrete pad across the way there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they, they can hold the bike, not even touch the brake. It's that slick. The parts washer? The juice from it. When it gets on a tire, it's that slickery. I would recommend you take that O-ring out, dry everything, and then put the grease in because that parts washer is going to make it well, too Pop slippery. that out a second. Pop your O-ring out a second. You shouldn't have to dry it. 
quit being cheap with the shit. Yeah, it ain't gonna hurt anything in there. All it's gonna do is give you a little bit heavier oil. You live in South Dam, Florida. You need all the extra weight to your oil you can get. That's right. This guy right here will tell you he's tore up how many air-cooled fucking <laughs> engines? Well, I I quit using non-ethanol in my stationary engines, so I'm not tearing things up. Roll that over to where you. But when I went to synthetic, when I first went to Amsoil in the stationaries, I haven't torn a stationary engine apart, lawnmower, power washer, whatever. I haven't torn a single one of them apart since I went to. Uh, synthetic motor oil. Every time I go to synthetic on any, well, you now if I, to be fair, if I do a rebuild with all brand new gaskets, I can get away with synthetic. But every time I go do to synthetic on one of these older bikes, even if it's only five or six years old, every gasket they'll all leak. Maybe incompatibility with the gasket material, but uh, uh, all of your motor oil has synthetic oil in it. Since there you go. Stay. It will stay. Alright. Like I said, just don't be cheap with the grease. <laughs> and this is not white lithium, it's regular lithium. I just need to pour some oil on my filter and slap it on there. Shouldn't have to pour any on your filter. Oh, okay. It's going to get a bath in a minute. <laughs> 2002 GS 500 F no Suzuki. F. No F. Oh, that's a oh no F. No F. Three five. Why do I keep calling this one an F? You've always done that. I know, but why do I keep calling? <coughs> I thought these 2002. I thought these were all full fares. This is cafe. I mean, this is something he's created, dude. Oh, okay, I got you. This is not something you just go buy. Yeah. I mean, he's cutting his fork brace right here. Yeah, everybody quit making their 500s, and now they're all going back and trying to re-engineer new 500s. Yeah. I'm just coming out with three of them. They can take that NC700X of mine and throw it in the goddamn trash. I wish I would have waited, because all they had that day was an automatic. And at the time, I was doing all those 750 automatics and the 400 automatics. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I kind of went with it. It was an impulse buy. But I really wish I would have hung out and got one with a normal transmission. I hate that damn thing. Well, most of the articles say that, that they, they like the stick shift better. They said a beginning rider who's got no experience might like the automatic. I just don't like, I mean, I, you know, I literally, I put enduro tires on it. It's my sand road cruiser now. <laughs> Pop your filter onto your shaft in there. Eh, 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 gasket came loose again. Ah, I didn't even notice that. Okay. Need to shove some more grease down in that groove on there. Well, no, as you see what he's doing with his thumbs, he's going side to side and he's twisting it as he's putting yeah. it in. He's not keeping it straight and pushing Sometimes down. Sometimes when it's hanging back away from the groove and you push it towards the groove, it rolls the O-ring. Yeah, that's right. The right you can see him with the, back out. with the top of his thumbs, he's rolling it instead of straightening it. See how, you see how the gasket's rolling? Mm -hmm. That's what keeps causing you to pop what? out. Let me see something. Let me now show you something. Now if I hold something. this down and pull it? Yeah, that there might you go. work, but it, you still rolled it. There you go. That might work. Then you got to take your other finger and just straighten it on either side. Yep. They're no fun. Yeah, it's coming out on the one edge. It's coming out. There you go. There's a, not a lot of grease in that groove. That's part of the reason it's popping out. You might be able to feel if it's not. Yeah, I'm watching, just in case. Thank you. You might be able to. Oh. What do you think? Think it's out? Yeah. 
That looks like it's out. Feels like it's out. Alright. Here, you hold this. I'll get this. You're filming right now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try and oh, give yeah. you an angle that, yeah, that it popped. Yeah. Put some more grease in that. When groove. I do this, I go here, I come under with my fingernail. I come under with my fingernail. I hold with anything I can. And I watch it and I rub my finger against it. And I make sure Not that rolling. it doesn't roll. If it did roll, I'm taking that roll back out with my finger while it's still in the groove. Oh, okay. I'm sorry I had to do that, but that's the only way that I could explain oh, that. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and then when I put this on, I take one hand, like this, I hold it, and so it doesn't it change its mind. <laughs> Hang on to it. No, I was just trying to get an angle where I can see what you're doing. If any good looking yeah. pussy walks by, just make sure you, you know, I mean. I'll just run over and point the, the camera straight up. I want to see the cooter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll, I'll run over and, and uh, lay down on the road and point the camera straight up. You know, that's something I've never understood. Why the fuck a bitch gonna show you her titties? I ain't after the titties, I can't fuck them, I want the pussy. What's that look like? Yeah, they gotta be pretty big and floppy before you can fuck them. You gotta tighten those yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he was saying, part of the trick is hold that thing flush and don't let it move. Don't let it roll. It, it steps back just a millimeter and that O-ring will try to walk. Ah, this is making me want to wait until I buy a brand new bike. <laughs> you don't want a new one. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I can't even. I can't even recommend anything. I did. The only buy, thing that I like. That 700. That's not a real first high year. Bike. First year. I had to have one. I was doing all them fucking automatics at the time. And I had that 750. I had both 750 automatics out. My 75 and my 76. I sold the 76. I kept the 75. We got one guy here locally that's riding around on one with 138,000, still on the stock pistons. Barely, but he's still on the stock pistons. Another guy's got uh, 60 something thousand on stock pistons. What about the transmissions? How are they? They don't fuck up. There's nothing in them to fuck up. It's basically a big hydraulic pump. That's my complaint with the NC. With the NC, is there's too much shit in there to fuck up. You what might they, as well have a Suzuki got, automatic. They got a bunch of wet clutches like a automotive automatic. It's still a slush pump, but it's yeah, pretty much move over shifters. Oh, okay. It's not a simple valve body and two gears like the original. Yeah. Well, that thing got some good reviews on the stock. The complaint I read the most about was that you couldn't get the ABS without buying the automatic. No, you can take that ABS. I've got rid of that ABS shit already. I've got regular masters from the rear. <laughs> How long have you had that bike? It's out of warranty, so 14, 15 months. Oh. So you bought it right up, right when it was brand new. You buy it from Steve over there? Fuck no. Steve's driving, riding one with uh, stick shift. Yeah. Well, I knew his kid was. I knew, I've seen his kid on one. You knew Steve had a stroke, right? Uh-uh. Uh, I don't talk to him much. I mean, I send people over there, but I don't go over there in person I never much. knew Steve well. I went to uh, school with his brother, Bobby. Yeah, the other side of Haps, the one up in Sarasota. Yeah, yeah. Because that's Bobby all one we family, that up. whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I knew the old man. <laughs> the old man was funny. I was up My there. new bike for this year was an Enfield Taurus diesel. Which I actually like. Well, they're making all those KLR diesels, but I don't know if they're selling them to the public yet. The military's buying the shit out of them. Yeah. 
I don't know. If, I don't know how what they're like to ride or. I got a deal. You know, I can't complain about for what I've got in that NC seven hundred. I can't really complain because I took the chump ass warranty. That got me some money knocked off. It was an in-house dealer warranty. They just don't file anything with Honda. Mm -hmm. And Orlando and Miami, you can do that at either one of them. Right. Um, I ain't going to mention any dealers because I don't want to get them in trouble with Honda, but now everybody knows where they are at least. <laughs> um, and they just do an in-house warranty is all they do when you take it that way. And you could probably still get it warranty through Honda. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Like I say, I've already thrown on enduro tires and put on a fork brace, and all I'm going to use it for is just burning the sand roads. Because as a street bike, it's useless. I was much happier. Tim, tell you what he got. I saw his car. Tim, yeah. tell you what he got in his last tank? Combination driving to work and uh, town. About 30, 40. 39 something. All right, now we're going to pour the oil. Did you tighten these? Yeah. yeah, you did. You tightened all three. Uh-huh. Okay. And I did the bottom already. All right. Now, your oil goes in over here, and we're going to see if he paid attention to the part about wipe out the funnel before he used it. It looks like he did. Yeah. You always wipe out that funnel right before you use it. Oh, wow. Hey, this thing's got focus on it. I'm finding all kind of buttons on this son of a bitch. <laughs> This takes three liters of oil. 2,800 cc's is what it says. Go to three liters if you change the filter. You'll be a hair over, but not enough to worry about. What's that hold? Oh, the, the whole container's three liters. No, that no, container's five four, four or five. five? I think it's four. That's five. One gallon. 3.785 liters. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, so it is three. 3.785. Yeah. yeah. So I need to go down to almost like one left. Yep. I was thinking it was a five. I don't know why. 11 bucks at Walmart, people. And it is about the best oil you can get. There's a reader. Yeah. What is it? Dello 400, the 15W40. These air-cooled engines in Florida, you need that extra five. Don't use the 10W. I think I'm probably good. I'm down to a little under a quarter. Yeah, that's good. Later. The um, recommendation when they put that 10W on there, that's a general recommendation for everywhere. If you look at the books for these bikes in Central and South America, it says 1540. See what Tim's car takes? 2050. Straight 30? 520. 515. What does he drive? He's got that brand new Honda. Oh. Oh, one of those little thingies? Yeah. Yeah, I remember he had the one well, Honda Fit the, before. That is and beyond the shadow of a doubt, the best car I've ever seen in my life. A Honda Fit? Oh, God. That thing, there isn't a car on the road that even comes close. Really? Shit. Smart car? Huh? Fuck smart a car? smart car. Them goddamn things are always getting no, in my this way. Is a straight car. All right, fuckers and fuckettes, now you all know how to change it's your oil on the GS500S. G no, GS 500. Straight 500, yeah. Straight 500. I'm sure it's probably the same for all the other 500s. So. Yeah, it, it's the same. 450 is the same. This is the yeah. first one I've seen apart with the, all the fairings off. Yeah, I got a little one I'm putting on the front. Yeah, he's got that little shorty black one right up there on top by the speakers. Right. He's got his gauge cluster already made. Oh, this is his, this is his version of a... Well, it's a Yamaha gauge cluster. cluster on a Suzuki. Right. Um, oh, he's got go. a Kawasaki helmet over there. Are you going to do a wind, windshield or No, just like this where those will hang over just a little bit. Yeah, that Kawasaki helmet there is his. Yeah. <laughs> Kawasaki helmet, Suzuki bike. Yamaha gauge cluster. Um, Who knows where the lights come. Homemade fork brace. Harley pipe. <laughs> Harley pipe. <laughs> Trailer uh, thing. Back. Tractor trailer light from Walmart, $5. <laughs> it works. A friend of mine went to Sturgis and he came back and there was a guy riding a Harley and he had a front fender like that for a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. And, and then he had the uh, he had feathers going all the way back like the 
the, or the one the where they take the broom Hillary. straws and they make the mohawk. Yeah. And they'll yeah, paint the it different colors. Back on the center of it, but it was a narrow mohawk, and but it was nothing but a front fender off a bike. And he had modified it to fit around his head a little bit. Yeah, he bent it out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. All right, we'll holler at y'all fuckers and fuckheads later.